All right, so hopefully you guys can hear me decent. Uh, it is June 6th today. It's pretty windy out. Um, so what I'm doing today, I'm coming out to show you guys. Uh, this would be the third video of the switchgrass update. I actually filmed this video, um, or a different video, uh, about four days ago. Uh, when you could see the switchgrass a little bit easier, but you can still see it pretty easy now. But uh, the, the sound did not work on the camera. So I have a different camera now. And uh, this will have to do, so hopefully it doesn't get too fuzzy. I got autofocus on for you guys. But we're going to show you guys um, basically the third video of the switchgrass series and where we're at. So June 6th today. Uh, it's plenty warm. It's like almost 90 degrees today. and We've had some hot weather the last oh, four days or so. Uh, they're talking warm weather and temps for the next two weeks, all in the mid to upper 80s. So, so here we are in south central Wisconsin, and uh, it's pretty warm for June. Hopefully it's not like this all summer, but you never know. But uh, So anyways, let's get to the switchgrass here. So I'm going to turn you guys around. Hopefully this isn't too bouncy for you. But this is the first field that I always start um, my switchgrass videos on. So usually I kind of stand up there by that spool. But here's the tower. This is a field we have planted corn this year, uh, broadcast corn. You can see it's coming up really nice. If you guys are ever wondering if you can broadcast corn, just disc it, seed it, and drag it. We do it every year and we have phenomenal success. But anyways, so here is the field now first glimpse wow a lot of green is that all switchgrass no not even close a lot of it is actually foxtail so i've been battling foxtail in here every year and any time i have ever had or my biggest weed that i have to compete against and my nemesis for all my switchgrass failures has been foxtail and that's what a lot of this is in here so however I'm able to see, and about a week ago, I was able to start seeing switchgrass in here. So I'm going to get down a little bit lower here. And I'm not sure how well you guys can see this. I got this little screen here. Try and get zoomed and focused in here. So you can see there's some broad leaves in here. But if you look close, all the grass that's a little bit darker and it's that a uh, little bit taller is switch. So I'll walk up to one here to show you guys, but it's there's quite a bit of switch in here, and I'm actually really happy. Again, this is a second year switch, so I planted this not this spring, the following uh, spring. It was actually in March, so I guess you could consider it was frost season. But in here too, you can see a little bit better. You know, the switch grass is a little bit taller here. Um, so this field is definitely what I would consider a success. Um, I'll walk up here closer to some of this switch. So it's hard to see, but here's, this is an example of what would be tough to see. So this lighter colored stuff, this is gonna be all that foxtail. This is all foxtail here, this light stuff. If I pan over here to the left, here you can see there's two pieces of switch. Right here's one, here's the other one. And when the sun actually shines, it's easier to see this stuff. So here's some, right here's one, right here, here's one right next to me. You know, I planted this, I'm pretty sure I planted this at eight pounds per acre. I'd have to look back at the other um, videos, but I'm pretty sure that's what I did. And if I get down here a little bit lower, you can definitely see that there's a good amount of switchgrass in here. But uh, overall, I'm very pleased with how this field is doing. I'm excited to see what it'll do this year. It's pretty consistent through this whole field as far as um, how spread out it is. So you think, well, those little blades of grass, you know, that's, that's not a lot of cover. They should be way closer. Well, I'm going to show you an example of what it looks like when this stuff gets a little bit older and more mature. So I'm going to go up to field number two. Hopefully you guys will be able to hear me. Like I said, it's very windy today. Um, but I'm going to head up there now and we'll take a look at field two and we'll buzz over to field three and hopefully you guys will be able to hear me with the wind. Alright, so here we are up in field number two. 
Um, we are approximately, I'd say 500 yards, 400 yards from that other field. Same property. Just right down that lane up this way, over by them trees, the woods over there. So, at first glimpse, you can see that there is definitely more weeds in this field. Um, battling some milkweed here, which that seems like that's always here. Um, and then there's this other, I don't even know what it is, this piney stuff. See, there's a fair amount of that. That stuff doesn't get real tall. Um, but yeah, we've been battling that too, as far as these switchgrass fields. And this field is definitely more difficult to see the switch. I honestly do not see as much switchgrass in here, but you can tell that um, the foxtail in here is a lot shorter than that other field. So this, this whole field up here used to be um, cedar trees and white pines. So when my parents bought the property in 2008, the first thing we did was get rid of some of these trees for the pheasants because all they were doing was housing hawks and owls. Um, so we got rid of these trees and then we kind of transitioned into a field. Now granted that was 13 years ago, but the soil still is probably not the greatest. We did put a bunch of lime in here, but I have not done a soil test back here in years. So planted the switchgrass anyways, um, but I just don't see as much of it. Now there is some in here, definitely. So right here's one. See it's got that darker, you can see that or not. It's a little fuzzy, but that dark red on the bottom, it's almost like a purple. And you can just see it's got that darker blade of grass and it's really, it feels felty almost. But if I look harder, I can definitely see some of it. I'm hoping at this point that the switchgrass that's in here is just shorter and I'm not able to pick it out as much but we'll see uh, this field I don't really know what I'm gonna do with it yet my guess is that I will mow this once this year and if I feel like I'm still not seeing a lot of switchgrass in another month or so I might mow it again now I'm not gonna reseed it or anything I'm gonna give it this full year and I'll probably give it all of next year too just to see what does come up because you have to have a lot of patience with switchgrass and and that's something that I have not had in the past and I told myself in year one and year two I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this switch to take in these fields you know, I'm not, I don't plan on hunting them I don't plan on being able to do anything with them they're just going to be basically bare down to nothing um, but yeah as I'm walking over here so here's another piece of switch uh, that's a lot shorter see that or not this little guy here so my hope is that there's just there's more in here and they're just they're shorter you know that might even be one there too yeah, i think it is um but while i'm back here i'm going to show you guys this baby so i planted this i would say this is I'm guessing three years old. Don't quote me on that. It's three or four. It's no way it's older than four. But right here, this is what we're looking looking at. So last year when I was mowing this, I've showed this clump in other videos. Um, but I could see that there was a clump of switchgrass. And so I kept mowing around it because I was just curious of what it would do in year, let's say three, which theoretically I'm pretty sure that is right. So this is year three for this. So I deemed that original plant being a complete failure so this is what I have left there's one other one on the other side of this field um, that I left too so there's two of them in this field so two of these seeds made it from my original planting of this when I didn't take care of it approximately three four years ago but as you can see so right here this was last year's growth, so let's say that's year three. So that I'm about six foot, a little over six foot. So these are these are right around six, just a hair under maybe. Um, but that's one switchgrass seed. Now look at the bottom of this thing. Look at how many stalks or whatever you want to call it are coming off of this thing. So that's one seed. So now if you think back to that field that I was just at, and you're like, oh man, that seems pretty sporadic. Well. You start getting one seed like that, 
you know you don't want this to have to be extremely extremely thick so I wanted it to have some space in there for some deer to lay down and it's, it's pheasant cover as well so I wanted it to not be over thick but I wanted it to be thick enough where it would still hold pheasants and deer or they would at least feel comfortable walking through it now granted my fields are not huge you know these aren't 15 20 acre switchgrass fields these things the biggest one I have is like three quarters of an acre so they're very small but you know it's what I want to do with these areas to try and make different transition areas on uh, just having a lot of diversity on the property so so here it is that's what would be your three or four switchgrass and what you're looking at so my hope is that next year my fields look a lot like this so we will see but yeah that's what you're looking at so it'll be interesting to see just how tall that gets this year my guess is that's probably going to be all a six foot six foot tall so all right we are going to head over to the next field which is way over there there's actually a turkey out in the field right now um but yeah we're going to head over there and we'll show you field number three all right so here we are field number three so kind of traveled across that field there and now we're up in this corner i really like this corner um it's a good rut spot Deer always tend to run kind of right along the railroad tracks here and head into the woods where my kill plot is and uh, it's just an overall it's a good spot to see deer in the rut so uh, this field now I would say is kind of in the middle between field number two and field number one as far as how much switchgrass I see but this field also I'm noticing as I'm kneeling here that it's pretty deceiving hopefully you guys can hear me it's very windy up here but uh, so just right here you can see there is some clumps of switch uh, here's one obviously that's one you know that's one right up there that's a big one so there's these clumps of switch that you see in here and some of them are taller but then you get down lower and you can see you know one like this a lot shorter you know there's another one you know right here in front of me that's a little bit shorter but uh, if you take your time and go real slow, I can see that there is quite a bit of switchgrass in here as well. It looks a little more spotty, but uh, I guess we'll kind of find out here in the next few weeks. But uh, I'll take a look over here. So, something about this field. So, this was the only field last year, so year one, that I could see switchgrass. I didn't know what I was looking for necessarily but I was 90% sure that I could see some switchgrass so that was right up here so when I was mowing this the multiple times last year I could see these clumps of switch uh, when I was mowing they were not really clumps they were more like individual twigs uh, but you could definitely see that these are clumping up in here so this up to the corner you can see you know maybe 50 50 plants here 50 individual seeds but uh yeah so this edge looks good it's just a matter of what's going to happen with this stuff i mean this is this is what i saw last year it was just individual twigs basically like this one and you can see from year one to year two it went from one to like a dozen and like i just showed you in the other on the other field what that what that switch grass does you know the following year you know, it really starts one seed really starts branching into a lot of different you know, twigs i guess so yeah so this is this is the biggest field i have this is about yeah three quarters of an acre ish a little bit less than that but yeah this is another one too we're gonna have to see i don't see as much switch over there by the four-wheeler it's definitely a lot better over here on this end uh, but something to keep in mind is so these are three fields these fields all had the exact same treatments they were all planted on the exact same day the treatments were all on the same day there's basically zero difference in what was exposed to these fields I mean they're all close so when it rained on one it rained on the other um, but maybe it's just it's a matter of you're battling different weeds in different areas you know but you're 
maybe the biggest thing here that I'm learning is, is soil type. You know, maybe the soil type for field number two is not the greatest, and maybe in field number one it, it is the best. You know, and that I know that that soil is not the greatest in field number one is either. Either I mean that's very rocky. It's kind of up high next to a woods. You know, even from a corn standpoint, when we plant corn there, it's not that tall. It doesn't give the biggest of you know cobs. It's just it's not great land. So if you guys have some fertile or more fertile ground, you know you're probably going to have a better look looking switchgrass field. You know, at this time of the year, early June, than I do on year two. But uh, I just wanted to make these videos so that you guys can see what I did, know what you're looking for, see kind of the progression as switchgrass comes. And the biggest thing is, is just to be patient. I mean, I was not patient last time I did this. You know, I was constantly in a hurry. If I didn't see something right away in year one, I just totally wrote it off. You know, I cut corners. I didn't do everything I was supposed to do, but I told myself, two years ago that I'm going to do anything and everything that I have to to get these fields to produce switchgrass so that I know that yes it can happen or no it cannot for some reason it's just it's not able to grow in this areas but as you can see it is definitely able to do it it just takes a lot of work there was a lot of days last year when it was 90 degrees and I was behind a DR mower walking for three four hours it's just I wanted to give it the chance and the chemical treatment definitely helps, but you'd st still have to mow. You know, I've heard some guys say, well, if you chemical treat, you don't have to mow. Maybe, but I can tell you right now that if I would not have mowed these fields last year, I would not be seeing any switchgrass, and I'm very confident with that, with that comment, so. But yeah, that should be about it for this one. I will check in with you guys maybe in a month or so, and we'll take a look at how the switchgrass is doing, and maybe we'll see more at that point. Thanks for watching, guys.